Welcome back to another Divinity Original Sin 2 video. Haven't done one of these in like two months. Alright, so we're going to be doing a new run here. I uh, like the last one. We're going to be doing mostly the combat because we're going to have some crazy combat going on in this run. Um, so we're going to be doing something uh, that I've been wanting to do for a while and I never really got around to doing it. I'm going to be running a uh, party-sized evolve run. Uh, so we're going to be using some mods for this run. Also the first... Uh, video series where I'm heavily using mods here. Uh, so we're using party sized evolve. It's just going to let us use uh, all six uh, origin characters. Just the full party six, everybody. All right, now there's going to be some mods to even out the difficulty with that later. All right, but we're going to be, this is going to be my extreme run, crazy run. Everything in this run is just designed to make my party just the most, I don't know. It, I don't know. It's enjoyable, chaotic, just crazy party. It's the most extreme it can be. All right. Uh, we're going to do a recipe unlocker. This, this one is not crazy at all. This is just kind of a uh, quality of life thing. Uh, I know 99% of the recipes that I use regularly in the game just by memory at this point. I mean, it's almost 2022 here, and the game's been out since 2017. I got the game, like, basically at release. Uh, so, I mean, I've got most of the recipes I know memorized. This just puts them in the game automatically, so there are one or two that I can't think of. It's just they're already there. Uh, this one also convenience, just when you hit the bedroll, you're going to restore source. Every single act has an infinite pool of source you can go back to. I mean, this is just a time saver, honestly. Like, I could do the same thing, like the same essential practical results by just taking more time. Uh, so this is just quality of life. Uh, we're going to be running the Lady C, Dahlia's Uniques. Um, so this one, it's just a new vendor that gets added to the game. Uh, she's got a set spot in each act or each island because act three four is ally anyway there's a new vendor and she just sells all of the unique items in the game which is kind of cool like you can just find her at the beach in fort joy and just buy any unique item in the game from her uh now i'm gonna have some restrictions on this so that i'm not like level two having like the full like faithful set or level two with like that uh, 25% crit chance hammer in act four. <clears throat> so what I'm going to use this one for is I'm going to try to just grab items from the act I'm in and below. Okay. So if I'm in act one, like the strongest thing I'll be able to buy from her is going to be like uh, the dragon's fang or something like that. Slain's sword, you know, the, the cool level nine damage sword. Uh, so we're going to be using that so we can just get, some uniques early, and maybe some of the uniques will be really cool to get duplicates of. I don't know. haven't really thought about that. Uh, but there'll be... We can get two of every unique by doing this. Just get it normally and get it from her. So that'll be a fun one. I'm going to try to not be super overpowered with that. Um, with some of the other challenge adjusting mods later on, maybe I'll break that rule and get some other items that aren't normally in that act. But we still got to pay for them. Like, I'm not using... If you notice, I'm not activating Cheat Commander, so I still got to get my gold the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> don't want to make it too easy on me. Um, we're going to be using Divine Scaling. So this one and Sims More Enemies. All right. Uh, these ones are going to be making the game harder so that it's not just, you know, me steamrolling the whole game with six people in the party. All right, because that would be boring. It would be kind of pointless. Um, cause, I mean, I've, you can solo the game with not a lone wolf character. Like, so six people, like, yeah. Um, so Divine Scaling. Uh, this one has a few things it does. <clears throat> um, it can change so that every enemy you encounter uh, scales to your level. So I can. So I'm going to change this every act. All right. Um, so I can set it to where every enemy, as soon as they take damage, as soon as I engage them in combat, they're just going to adjust their level based on what setting I have this set to. Uh, so I'm going to change this every act. I think is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm either going to do every act, or I might split act one into, like, in Fort Joy, and once you escape the fort. Like, we're still on the island, but you're not locked in the fort, you know? Um, but basically every, I don't know, checkpoint, because it might not be every act, I'm just going to bump up the level. So I'm going to start it off, everything's going to be at my level, because I can go through the whole game at this point, you know, with playing it as many times as I have, where every, I can be out-leveled on everything. Like, I can be level two and not have to fight anything at my level or lower, or higher, I mean. Like, I can fight everything level one, level two. And then I can get to like level four with basically no combat and then just fight a bunch of level three stuff, get to level five and kill a bunch of level four stuff, get to level six, 
And then I can basically keep that trend up the whole game at this point. So I'm going to do level, or act one, everything's going to be set to my level. Act two, everything's going to be one more level higher than I am. Act three, we're going to have everything two levels higher than me. And act four, we're going to have everything three levels higher than me. Actually, just to make it easy, I might just do it like act one, things are one level higher. Yeah, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. While I'm inside Fort Joy, everything's going to be at my level. As soon as I escape Fort Joy, everything's going to be plus one to my level. So if I find, like, uh, just some random encounter, like, let's say I get to the Alexander Worm fight and I'm at level 10 because the scaling is going to be all wonky in this game, it'll scale them to level 11. As soon as I engage combat, they all go fling, level up, and boom, they're one level higher than me. All right, so we're going to do inside Fort Joy at level. So as you escape Fort Joy, I'm going to go plus one, and then every act I'm going to add plus one to it. Um, I think this one also has this... Um, a modifier to like give them bonus attributes. I don't know exactly how customizable that is, so we're just gonna stick to the level change. Uh, Sims more enemies. I have 50% extra people in my party. I'm gonna just make it spawn 50% more enemies per encounter. Um, I don't know how this works with like single enemy encounters, like fighting slain. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see how that works. I know this one can adjust like a set number of extra enemies or a percentage of extra enemies. I'm gonna go percentage that way. It you know, actually scales. Uh, instant Merchant Refresh. This is just because I have six people and I'm going to need a lot of equipment. This just makes it to where whenever you exit a trader's inventory and then you re-trade with them, their entire inventory is just refreshed. Uh, which is actually busted for thievery because if you have multiple characters with thievery, you can just go in and steal from them like six times in a row. With all of this mod at least six times in a row. Um, this mod being the six-man party one. Uh, and you don't have to wait an hour or a level up for them to refresh. And if you're like looking for a really good equipment, you can just enter trade, exit, enter trade, exit, and it saves you so much time. Uh, so this is going to be really nice. Um, I'm going to be using Summon Overhaul, because I'm going to put a Summoner in the party. I'm not a huge fan of Summoners, but with this mod, they're not weak, so that's good. Um, this one makes it to where you can cast the buffs on anything, like the built-in gift bag. But also, whenever you get your summoning to level 10, um, if you're familiar with the game, you know the base summoning pet, the Incarnate. When you get to level 10, it becomes this, it goes from like this little gremlin thing to like this massive beast. Uh, this sets it to where I think every summon in the game gets a giant version, a better version of itself uh, when you hit summoning level 10. Uh, the only one I don't think that has that, or the only two that don't have it, is the Oil Blob from Polymorph that you can summon, and I think the Bloated Corpse from Necromancy. I think those are the only two that don't have a bigger version. Like, I know the Condor has a bigger version. I think the Cat even goes into, like, a Tiger. Um, the Bone Spider, it's just a big spider. <laughs> um, Iphen's Wolf turns into, like, that... Uh, uh, weird Abomination thing from Act 2. Like, it's just... It just and... So, so it does that, and it also gives them all the big stat boost that the Incarnate would normally get from going from level 9 to 10. Um, and also, this makes it to where any surface, when I'll give your Incarnate, that surfaces infusions. Uh, meaning, blessed and cursed surfaces, you can summon blessed and cursed Incarnates, which is cool. Because even with the infusions, you know, they don't get everything covered with that. So you can get like a cursed fire incarnate or a cursed fire bone spider you can get like a, a cursed blood bone spider and it'll get grasp of the star like it's, it's cool so this actually makes summoning kind of fun uh random elite enemies uh similar to the monster scaling the divine scaling um, i'm going to change this every act um this will make uh, a random number of enemies well, I, I can set the number of enemies so i'm gonna be like act one one enemy per group act two two enemies per group act three three you know etc um, and it also has, like, stages of buffs that it gives them. So, like, one of them, it's, like, 10% resistance to everything, a little bit more damage, one extra random skill, and then it's, like, bump it up, and it's more resistance, more extra skills, more damage. So I'm going to bump that up as we go through the game as well. Um, and because we're going to be fighting a lot of extra stuff, um, for Act 1, I'm going to put in 50% less XP gain. And then when we hit Act 2 and beyond, I'm going to swap this one out and put in 75% less XP gain. 
simply because with fighting 50% more enemies and with them scaling up in levels, and I'm already going to be leveling up faster because there's more enemies, and then I'm making them stronger, so I'm going to level up even faster, um, I'm going to need less XP, or I'm going to hit, like, level 20, like, partway into Act 2, and then by the time I get to the end of the game, there's some stuff that I've heard, I haven't tested it out myself, but I've heard it gets kind of glitchy if you level up past level 30, and with the way I'm planning on scaling enemies, I feel like I would hit level 30 if I don't have an experience regression mod like this. Uh, so we're going to start off with level 50, or not level 50, we're going to start off with 50% less XP, um, and then when we hit Act 2 and we bump up the difficulty, uh, we're going to swap over to this so that I don't... I, I think that should keep us about on pace with the normal scaling. Um, at least for Act 1 it should. I don't know about beyond that, because I'm going to be having people be constantly two and three levels higher than me. Um, so we'll see. And I'm not going to squeeze out every inch of XP like I would normally try to do. I mean, if there's something there to get XP, I'll do it, but I'm not going to be a super perfectionist about it. Um, and then because we have six people in the party and so much shit to keep track of, I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours shopping for stuff. So to keep the shopping simple and to keep the unique items I'm going to be picking up uh, useful for the whole game, I'm going to be using the automatic item leveling. So... Whatever item I equip to a person, as soon as it gets equipped, it goes and adjusts itself to that player's level. Um, I believe there is some situations where it will make an item slightly weaker, but I don't think there's any instances where it'll make something stronger than it would normally be at that level. Alright, so that was a lot of rambling. That was uh, almost 12 minutes of rambling, just going over the mods I'm using for this insane run. Uh, I made a new profile, just called it Six Man, uh, so there will be some like tutorial pop-ups coming in. Uh, I'm going to do it on just regular tactician, I'm not doing this on honor because with six people in the group, um, this, the odds of something going crazy and killing one of them is pretty high, so I don't want to deal with honor and safe scumming and all that other nonsense, so we're just going to do it on normal tactician. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, we are going to be running through this with all of the origin characters. And the one I'm going to be using personally is going to be Fane. Uh, simply because he's undead. So when we get to Act 3 and get to the Academy, I can have him get boosted. And uh, just make him, make him just a little bit better. Because if you don't have him as your main, you're really just kind of weakening him, I guess. Because you can't become sworn. Uh, even though we are very likely just going to get rid of the Sworn uh, ability there, uh, after the Sworn status. Alright, uh, so we're going to just keep everybody looking themselves, we're not going to change anything up about them. Uh, we are, however, going to swap this to Battle Mage, just so we get two melee weapons in that spawning chest. Um, so we're going to have a pretty evenly mixed party. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be all right. Um, and ironically, uh, we're going to start with two melee weapons of strength, but we're not going to give Fane any, uh, which call it, uh, warfare stuff right off the bat. Where is, I'm trying to think what we're actually going to be doing here. We actually, you know what? Yeah, we will give him some warfare stuff. Uh, we're going to go warfare polymorph. Okay, and then we're going to give Fane Thievery, because he's got those bony skeleton fingers. Uh, so we're going to start off with that setup, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, talents. Um, we're also going to be running some gift bag mods, so I'm going to actually stop the video when we get to those, because I don't want this to be a super long video, or we'll just get off the boat. I don't know. Uh, well, Fane's going to be our dual wielding sparky guy um i mean i'm overthinking this let's just grab executioner and call it a day all right so we're going to be starting off here uh why are we still kind of oh yeah cuz i picked polymorph and i didn't Grab that extra attribute point. Uh, so we are real quick. Because it's a new profile, everything's set to the defaults. Um, so 
I'm going to just adjust some stuff here. Uh, like no auto saves, max quick saves. I just like having it at three. Uh, Uh, no tutorial boxes. Uh, here we go. Automated hotbar. Don't add arrows. Don't add grenades or potions or scrolls. Just add skills. And then remove the unmemorized ones. That is it. Okay. And then while we're here, we're also going to go to gift bag features. We're going to be doing uh, herb gardens, just because there's some uh, craftable stuff I want to grab. Uh, source, medita source Meditation, we actually already put on a mod for that, so we're not going to bother with that. Um, I'm going to put on Animal Empathy, just because I've played through the game enough. I don't want to specify a pet pal person. Uh, Hagglers also just, I don't want to move everything to one person's inventory. This is like a shittier version of one of the mods I am using. Um, but we're going to use something similar to that. Crafters Kit, sure we are. Mainly we want the Divine Talents. Um, we're going to go with Fort Joy Magic Mirror because there's some builds that I want to use that aren't recruitable. And what, what is this one? No, I already actually have a mod for that that's better than that. And then Endless Runner just to move around quickly. So that will complete the mods that we are using. Okay, we got all those mods up and running from the gift bag. So I'm actually just going to go uh, until we recruit everybody off the boat. And that'll be where we end this video. I might skip around a bit, like this, just skipping around. All right, hop are taken care of. All right, now here's part of the thing, or here's part of the thing. What the hell am I talking about? Here's one of the mods uh, that we have in is this girl Sarah. Uh, I gotta read through this a little bit, but she is the person who lets us. Uh, adjust the difficulty scaling. So we're gonna keep it at plus zero. All right, and then we're gonna talk to her again. Ask her as a way to reach her without having to return here. Uh, so she's gonna give me a Sarah's communication orb right there so that I can just talk to her whenever I want and adjust some stuff. Uh, so she can adjust the level relative to my level. We can also change their attributes. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that just does all six, like strength, con, finesse, all that. Uh, by one or what it does exactly, but we're not gonna mess with that one Try to start combat here. I think we gotta attack them a third time in order to actually get this going and I am going to uh, Actually turn into a lizard So that I can use my fire breath on them from a bit of a distance Okay, and hopefully There we go. Alright. Oh, Sarah's in combat. I did not realize that would happen. Sarah's killing people. Okay. Uh, so we got her in combat. We don't have Magister Watts in combat yet. I would really appreciate it if she would get into combat, though. I'll just walk over here just a little bit. Walk over here just a little bit. I don't get experience for you dying if you don't walk over here just a little bit. Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to use all my AP. To just run over here. And I guess Sarah's going to be killing a lot of people. Okay. I was waiting a while for that whole thing to wrap up. Um, turns out with Sarah over here, uh, she kills stuff fast. Uh, so I'm going to go invisible for just a second. And then I'm going to run over here. I'm going to run as close to over there as I can. Uh, I was hoping to get them activated this turn. I guess i got to wait another round, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, it's been a minute, and I am back. I'm going to try to get these guys in combat. Um, I don't know if I can get close enough here, though. Especially because I'm invisible, so they aren't going to see me unless I get uninvisible. And I don't think I can do that right now. I'm just going to come up here. I guess we got to wait another round. 
Okay, we are now close enough to where I can do this. And then she's going to nuke the whole boat here. I'm not going to get the normal amount of XP. I'm going to get 350. Um, normally you'd get 900, 925, something around there. Um, but because I've got the half XP on, all the people that just died don't give me their full amount of XP. That 400, though, stays. So that experience modifying mod I got does not affect quest XP at all. It is just affecting my, um, what you call it, combat XP. Okay? And I'm going to purposely not put on a helmet and keep my bony visage uh, visible. I'm also pretty sure that this uh, mod on that dog is actually going to give me no experience. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick that lock with my bony fingers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to use rest to get a little bit of boost. Alright, yeah, that, uh, that, ooh, we got an elite enemy already. He used purge. Oh, that's right, resting is giving me source. Forgot about that. With elite Magister Rix, he is going to be uh, giving me some issues already. That's neat. Alright, so. Uh, we can actually knock down Magister Rix right away. Uh, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, I think I want to do is just smack him. Okay, miss him with my main attack. And then I'm going to use the old go invisible and delay my turn strategy. Okay, see now I'm seeing that Rix is going before me. So I am going to actually go and knock him down. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Yep, knock him down. And then I think I'm going to go and smack... Well, I'm going to get in position to smack Murtaugh. Rex gets up. I'm going to go smack smack. And then battering ram to knock them both down. And then let's hope that I can kill him. Perfect. Executioner went off. And then this attack should kill him. Beautiful. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to be able to grab the death fog barrels without haste. That's why the earlier part took so long to run into place. I'm used to doing that with haste. An extra action point and some extra movement every turn really makes a difference. Yeah, I don't think I can grab one of these. Oh, I can. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need that. I mean, I know I won't need that, but I don't know if I'm going to want that later. All right, now, quick tip here. Uh, if you have an undead in your party on the boat, you want to make sure that they have some part of their body with their bony appearance visible when you go up this stairway here. Because then this guy will be like, it's an undead, attack him. Ah. And then he's an enemy. So then when the Kraken attacks him and kills him, you get experience for it. Now, again, we are using this mod where I get 50% experience from kills. So that's only 50 XP instead of 100. But... Uh, that can be a great source of early XP if you're struggling in the early game or if you have, you know, played before and you were, like, just barely not able to level up in time for something in early Act 1. Like, just some simple undead tricks here uh, can really make a big difference. Alright, Executioner was definitely the right call for this here. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. And again, I could just run around on that poison to heal up, or I could just rest right now. Alright. And another thing that I did in one of my walkthroughs that is much easier now that I know about that undead trick, just run up to these guys, showing that you're undead. They'll be like, oh, undead, strike it down. Boom. They get killed by the Kraken, you get 100 XP for both of them. In this particular case, you only get 50 XP, but still, you get the XP for them so much easier than sending out the little incarnate tactic that I used on one of the walkthrough videos. I come down here. Bada bing, bada boom. These guys are fighting them. I don't know how they started fighting them without me here already. Yeah, Beast is going to use Petrifying Touch. That's his go-to opening on these motherfuckers. Now, I will say normally at this point in the game, uh, if you did everything the way I did with getting the boat combat on this floor earlier, and with having the undead face showing, killing Rix and Murtoff. Uh, and if you killed the dog as well, I don't know if the dog is necessary, he does have a tiny amount of XP. Uh, you could be at level 2 at this fight. 
Um, I think before even getting to the fight, not even like leveling up partway through. Uh, so that can make a world of difference here. And then I'm just going to knock him down. I don't know if I would have been able to kill him, but we've got our whole party here, which is what we're going to have the whole game. So that's nice. Uh, we got them helping us out, so we should be fine right here. Okay, and Sabil got us that last kill. Uh, now again, we have half the XP coming in, so we are not at level 2 for that fight. Um, I'm not really going to grab anything else from these guys. Like You're going to get, I don't know, some meat from the Voidlings if you're lucky. Let's just see what we got. Yeah, nothing. You, if you're lucky, you might get some like meat from the Voidlings. Uh, I don't think you can get any like life essence or anything like that. Shadow essence, maybe, but... Uh, you can grab this corpse there if you eat that piece of thing, that piece of thing, that piece of meat, uh, with an elf, which would be Sabeel in this case, or somebody with Fane's shape-shifting mask. Uh, they'll get adrenaline all the time from that piece of flesh, so that's cool. And we did just level up there from quest XP, so we are now at level 2, leaving the boat. We got our waypoint, we got our waypoint. And I'm actually going to go to this waypoint, and I'm going to drop off this Death Fog barrel. Okay, uh, Whisperwood, grab, grab our normal stuff. Uh, now, there is one, if somebody wants to do the same mod loadout that I'm doing, there is one little bit of uh, inconvenience that I'm going to let you guys know right now. If we use the, uh, where is it? the Sarah's communication orb to go talk to her and change the scaling. For some reason, she doesn't let you do that. Like, she just doesn't talk to you if uh, you have more than four people in your party. Uh, so when we go to adjust that halfway through Act 1 and then at the beginning of the further acts, um, we are going to have to dismiss down to four people in our party, which is fine because you can just re-recruit them. Uh, but if you were going to try this combination, you can't figure out why she's not talking to you. I figured out that is the reason why. It's because you have more than four people in your party. I don't know why that interaction goes that way, but that's what it is. All right, so we are going to level up here, and he is going to be our Master of Sparks setup right there. Um, also, for the team, I was going to do two Strength, two Finesse, two Intelligence, just to uh, make the armor even out. But then I was like, you know what, we want the damage to be evened out, so we're actually going to do two finesse, one strength, and three intelligence, and the intelligence ones are going to have a little bit of physics. Like, everybody's going to have a little bit of their other main attribute, or main damage type, rather. Like, like the magic ones are going to have some physical damage, the physical ones are going to have some magic damage. Uh, but for the most part, that's not going to be the case. Fane is going to be a decent split, but he is going to be with his abilities more uh, physical based. So I'm going to go through and recruit everybody, talk about what their particular build is going to look like, and then uh, and then we're going to end the video with that. So uh, we are going to have Red Prince be an interesting build. He's going to be a Pyro Summoner, all right? Because he gets a dragon late game, um, and normally it's just like a little baby dragon. With that summoning mod I was using, that I am using, uh, that little baby dragon turns into a giant adult dragon and gets a couple extra powers, which is pretty fucking cool. Even if it is only for the last act of the game, uh, I don't want to change up what people's builds are partway through. Uh, so I'm going to start him off as a conjurer. Um, I do have the uh, mirror on Fort Joy just because the loadouts are kind of trash when you recruit them. But... We're going to start them off with the closest thing to what they're going to end up being. And this is Lady Dahlia. Uh, she is the one who's going to sell us all the unique items. And as you can see, she has every unique item in the game right here. Like we have, uh, for example, Anathema right there. At level 2, Anathema does 23 to 26 damage. Which is a lot, considering that a normal 2 hander does 7 to 8. Uh, so yeah, it is It is a lot of damage, but it'll, it'll break. Uh, so we're not going to get, you know, all a bunch of crazy stuff. But we are going to get stuff that we can normally get in Act 1 while we're in Act 1. I don't think... Yeah, this does not have the relics sets on here. Uh, so we can't just buy those. Um, and she, for some reason, is like level 26. I don't know why. But that's just what she's set at. And I'm going to skip all the normal encounter-related stuff over here. 
I'm going to grab a Yarrow Flower so I don't talk to Migo without having one later, because I do that from time to time. And we're going to get the book and shovel that are up here. So I don't know if it's the garden or the crafting kit thing, but there's one of the gift bag mods puts that in there, puts that book there, and it just gives you a couple of new recipes that you wouldn't otherwise be able to use. Not even like you would have to not find them, just know them, like they just wouldn't be usable without that mod. Uh, so that one is pretty interesting. Uh, I'm probably going to fight these guys later. So I'm going to do the old sneak up through the ladder entrance. Whoa, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Make sure you cover your undead at this point. Or you'll start combat with people right up at the beginning of Fort Joy. I almost forgot about that. I have forgotten about that before. Uh, so yeah, make sure you do that if you're going to be doing this the way I've been doing this. Almost forgot. Alright. Alright, so first person we're recruiting is going to be Losa, and we're going to just keep her being herself. Uh, so she's going to be an enchanter, nothing fancy, just she's going to be a straight up enchanter build. Very, very solid build from early game all the way into late. No reason to mess with it. <clears throat> Alright, um, I don't want to deal with them just yet. That'll be our first actual encounter. And we'll do it after we have everybody recruited. Well, except I think, because that's how you recruit him. Uh, Sabeel is going to be... What was she going to be? Oh, she's going to be one of our magic damage dealers. But I'm not going to do just a typical wizard setup. It's not going to be a perfect balance of all four magic pools. Uh, she's actually going to be part Geomancer, part Hydromancer, which isn't a default loadout. Uh, so for the time being, since she's going to be Hydro and Geo, um, I'm going to have her just kind of mesh well with Sabi or not with Sabeel, with Losa for the time being. So I'm going to make her be a enchanter as well. And I'm mostly just doing that uh, so that we have complementing damage types for the super, super, super early game. Uh, and I just don't want, there's going to be less spells for her to unmemorize there than if we went with wizard first. I'm going around this way, not this way, so that the Red Prince's assassin guy doesn't attack us when we go to talk to Beast. Uh, Beast is going to be a rogue. So we're going to go through that conversation. And... Finesse. So he's going to be a rogue, but we're, we're picking Shadow Blade just because... There's less nonsense for me to sort through on the magic mirror later. Uh, and then Ifen is going to be our archer character. Alright, so we have a uh, strength fire, or I guess we're going to be warfare fire with Fane. Uh, we're going to be scoundrel warfare with Beast. We're going to be all hunts. No, we're going to be Hydro Geo with Spiel. We're going to be uh, Hydro Arrow with. Losa, and we're going to be Pyro Summoning with Red Prince, and then Ifen is going to be uh, all Geo. Alright, and our first encounter here. Oh, you know what? There was one thing with mods that I forgot to do. I need to put everything up to an extra 50% party size. Uh, so we're going to have Beast come over here, one action point to move, one action point to knock him on his ass, one action point to get behind her, and one action point to paralyze her. Beast as a rogue is a beast. Sorry, Beast is a shadow blade. Alright, I skipped around the turn, not skipped around, I, I held the turns, just to show you what that new summoning mod I was talking about does when I notice we have electrified blood here. So I can now summon an incarnate on electrified blood. Okay, and now we have a blood electrified infusion. Meaning he has electric discharge to deal magic damage, and he has mosquito swarm to deal physical damage. 
which is actually perfect for these guys. Physical damage on Burrow, he'll bleed and die. And then Kana is just dead right there. Uh, so it's kind of perfect uh, having an incarnate like that. Kind of just set us all up. And we're going to go through there. Uh, finesse. And we're going to go with uh, Ranger. Okay. And there we have our whole party. Uh, I'm going to go adjust some stuff in the magic mirror, get them a little bit more where they're supposed to be. Oh, before I forget, actually, I'm going to come in here and we're going to go to, uh, we have elite enemies and more enemies. Uh, party size of all of you can just change like 7, 8, 9, 10 people. That's all that is. Uh, which I've done, I, I've thought about trying 7. I didn't really get that far. I didn't even get out of Fort Joy where you just make a custom character and then recruit everybody. But y you can do a lot with that one. Uh, we're going to do the more enemies mod settings. Uh, so right now we have it disabled. Or no, that's looting is disabled. Um, so we're going to use a spawn method fixed. So spawn method percent, you want this up here is what you have on. Uh, we're going to go with increase enemies. 50%. So we normally would have four people in the party. We have 50% more. So we're going to give the enemies 50% more. We might bump that up to like whoops not that we might bump that up to 75 percent more which would be like if we had a third extra party member uh but we're gonna for the time being just keep it at 50 percent extra um and we are going to enable looting of the dead corpses and we're going to be done and exit and i believe just to double check now we're going to open that up make sure it is yep percent 50 enabled beautiful and then uh, elite enemies. It looks like we already have it set to one. Uh, number of ran Okay, so we're going to do modify odds. We're going to do 100%. Right there. Uh, maximum elites per battle, one. So as we go up in the axe, we're going to bump that up from one to two to three to four. For right now, just one. Um modify yep, uh, modify number of skills we'll also bump that up with the uh, axe so by the time we hit act four every encounter will have four elite enemies with four extra skills um, and the difficulty will also because there's four of them we'll just keep it at tough guy and then what a boss i'm gonna regret this why did it is so we're, i don't know exactly what those all do i'm assuming as you go down they get stronger based on the names uh, but we're going to make that also. So everything here is going to go up by one. But we are always going to have at least one elite enemy. So if there's an encounter with only one enemy, it's going to be right there. And that is it for the mods. That is how we're going to be doing this run. So as we go through the game, we're going to just progressively increase the difficulty every act. And uh, yeah, that is that is our party now. We have Fane with our dual wielding... Uh, Sparkmaster setup is what we're going to go with. I might just have um, Red Prince be the one casting the Sparkmaster. It might make him like a glass cannon, just have him do all his setup at the beginning of the turn, give him high wits as well. Um, I don't know yet. Just that way Thane isn't going to have to pump up Pyro so that we... I don't want two Pyro people, but not a intelligence-based Pyro person, you know? Uh, so we'll see. Uh, he'll definitely start off with the non-source version of Sparks on himself, obviously. Uh, Ifen, just going to be your standard archer loadout. Some magic arrows. Beast, he's going to be a rogue. So a little bit of magic, not a lot. Sabeel is going to be Hydro Geo. Uh, so lots of slowing down the enemy, immobilizing the enemy. A little bit of knocking down the enemy, freezing. Like, she's just going to be making the enemies not enjoy their time. Um, she might also end up getting gloves of teleportation just to move some people around as well. I don't know. Um, she, she's the one I might swap up what she does. Um, and low says going to be our normal standard enchanter setup. Um, because our fire is mostly going to be coming from the incarnate and fane, um, they don't, they're not going to be melting people when they're frozen. It's going to be mostly sparks doing the fire damage, which does not melt. So it won't have any issues there, which is the main reason I'm doing it that way with the pyro damage. And then 
Red is going to be our summoner with some pyro stuff. Because he's got fire breath. He's a red lizard man. He should have fire. Alright, so we're going to end it there. Uh, next time we come back to this series, it will be probably next year. Because I'm terrible at consistency on these. And uh, we'll be doing some combat with that. With our massive party and some massive enemy groups. Alright. I will see you guys in the next one.